Now, one of the differences between slavery in the United States and elsewhere in the Western Hemisphere, which is very important in many ways, is this. Very early on, the United States, I'm using that term, even though it wasn't the United States back then, it develops a self-reproducing slave population. The slave population reproduces itself very early. In the Caribbean, it never did. The death rate is always higher than the birth rate, so without the continual influx of slaves, the system will collapse. That's why on the, that map I showed you, the vast majority of slaves are going to the Caribbean and Brazil, because those places, the death rate is higher than the birth rate. U.S., it's not the same. It, it's different, very early. Why? Is this because we treated the slaves so well? No, that has absolutely nothing to do with it, of course. Birth rates have nothing to do with treatment. Which country in the world today has the highest birth rate? I don't know, Bangladesh, maybe. Is that because... Everyone's living so high on the hog in Bangladesh? No. The re in fact, normally the poorer people are, the more children they have, because the children are a form of economic insurance, so to speak. But in this case, it's because the, most of, the United, of what becomes the United States is outside the zone of tropical diseases. It's a more temperate climate. The de now, sugar is pretty rough, and the death rate on sugar plantations was definitely higher just from labor, but it's, it's, the, it's the death rate from disease which is decimating both the slave and the white population in, the, in those other areas. But in the, what becomes the U.S., that those, this is a temperate climate, and those tropical diseases, you know, New Orleans has some epidemics, but basically the, the death rate for both whites and blacks is much lower once civilization gets going, so to speak. Than, um, than elsewhere. So, by, so the result of that, of course, is the, um, that the, the culture of black and white come closer together. You don't have this constant influx of Africans as you do in, in, um, in, in uh, uh, the Caribbean. This is a wonderful painting called The Old Plantation from the late 1700s in South Carolina. And it shows a group of slaves one is playing a banjo, one is doing some sort of dance. These are African things. The dance is an African dance, the banjo is an African um, uh, instrument, and yet they are wearing European-type clothing. I mean, in a way, this painting illustrates the closing of the gap in some ways between black and white culture, so to speak, in, um, in American, uh, in U.S. slavery. The great era of the slave trade to what becomes the United States is about 1730 to 1770. That's when, that, that, you're talking about maybe 400,000 slaves were brought in to the American colonies. That's a heck of a lot of people, but remember, there were 10 million brought across the ocean, so the 400,000 is a very, very small percentage of the total slave trade. 1770. Now, there is some illegal, some importation later, some illegal, some legal. But basically, by 1860, the vast majority of the black population in this country are two generations at least removed from Africa. They are African Americans. That's what they are. They're people born in America whose ancestry is African. Um, and they are, they, their culture is a merger of African and American uh, culture. We will see that uh, uh, down the road. But anyway, as I say, by this point, the slave laws, what they call the slave codes, are in place, and they don't really change very much all through the 19th century. At the base of the law of slavery is that the slave is property. That's number one. Completely under the will of the master and more generally of the white community at large. Slaves cannot testify in court in a case involving a white person. They cannot move, go anywhere without a pass from a white person. Increasingly, they cannot be taught to read and write. Uh, their marriages on, have no legal standing. They are not recognized in law. But they, they can get married, but there's no legal basis. The master can punish them in virtually any way he wants with only minimal, minimal oversight by the law. 
any white person can apprehend any black person if they have a suspicion about them. Um, and as property, slaves can be bought, sold, rented, willed, sued for in court, etc. Many of these regulations, but not being property, also apply to free blacks. There are not a lot of free blacks at this period, but by the 19th century, a free black community will be developing, as we'll see. But they're not, to be free and black does not mean you enjoy the same legal rights as white people. But with all that, it's important to remember that at the heart of the system is just violence, is physical brutality. This is an abolitionist image of the whipping of a black person being hung from a tree and another one over on the side being whipped, lying on the ground. And just the, the physical violence is at the core of the maintenance of the slave system. Now, as I said, all the original 13 colonies had slavery in one form or another, many more in the South than in the North, but in the North, there were slaves in New England, very few. New York was a center of slavery. New York City in 1750, about one-seventh, 15% of the population of this city were slaves. Slaves worked in, on the docks, they worked for craftsmen, they worked Many of them worked in the homes of well-to-do people as servants of one kind or another. Um, many, many slaves worked on farms in the surrounding countryside, which included at that time, believe it or not, Brooklyn. Brooklyn was a farming county, Kings County, and uh, probably a majority of the farms in Brooklyn at that time used at least one slave as, uh, as labor. So slavery was around, but as I say, it wasn't the foundation of the economic uh, order here. But overall, as I say, by the 18th century, slavery and the slave trade are key aspects of the Atlantic world. And um, the money flows back into England. It enriches the crown, the, 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 the government. It enriches British merchants, particularly in Liverpool, Bristol, the ports on the western side of Great Britain. Much of that money will go into the early Industrial Revolution. The, the money that flows into the early factory system is coming out of the profits made from um, slave labor and the slave trade. 